Hello everyone. Now in this tutorial we will have a look at the Lightly command line interface. So make sure you have uh, a data set at hand. In my case I use uh, Cypher 10 and make sure you have Lightly installed. Um, you can check this by trying to import Lightly in Python. Um, I can also show you the, the version I use at the moment. So it's uh, 1.0.4. Now once Lightly is installed, you can use the Lightly command line interface. It's basically a way to, to use it as any other um, software you install on your computer. Just take, uh, you can just type in Lightly and use the tab key for auto-completion. So you see here we have Lightly download, embed, magic, train and upload. Uh, let me start with train. You can also always have a look at the various commands you can use by um, doing dash dash help. Um, here you get an overview of the different commands you could use. Um, you can also scroll up here in my tmux session. Um, actually, the, the messages are longer. You also get a, an overview of all the different uh, configurations you can set. Uh, we can specify an input directory, uh, output directory of everyone to have to the outputs. Um, we can uh, f change various parameters of the model. We can use pre-trained models um, or, or not. By default, we use pre-trained models. We can specify the model itself. By default, we use a ResNet 18. The output dimension, this is um, typically in contrastive learning, the kind of projection head um, before the, like the, the very last uh, layer actually um, in the model. The number of features is the, before the projection head. So it's basically the embedding you, you, you want to use. And just make sure this is a rather low value, um, like 32, 16, because it, it uh, makes the, the embeddings much more um, useful for selecting samples. Because if you have a very high dimensional embedding, you run into issues such as um, curse of dimensionality, because you can imagine if you have a very high dimensional space, two points, uh, two points even uh, close to each other might be quite far away because we just have so many dimensions, the model can just put stuff somewhere in the room. Um, for the training procedure itself, uh, you can set the temperature, you can specify learning rate, weight decay, um, anything related to augmentation or, or data pre-processing is here in this uh, collate block. You can specify the input resolution, um, probability for color jitter, uh, the brightness, contrast, saturation, hue. So this is all related to color. Um, the minimum scale of the input image. Um, like if you read one of the contrastive learning papers, usually the augmentations are quite strong. So in this case, we, we have crops of up to 0.15, so 15% of the original image. There's also a random factor to turn the image into a grayscale image. Um, we also use blur. Uh, you can also specify the kernel size for blur. Then we have various other options, such as the vertical flip, flip probability, horizontal flip, and random rotation. Rotation is only for uh, 90 degrees. Now, if you go further down, we have the loader. Um, basically, this is the data loader. You can specify patch size. Um, you can specify whether we want to shuffle the data set. I would highly recommend to do that. Number of workers. If you have a multi-core CPU um, on your machine, just uh, use number of workers equals to the number of cores you have. Um, this one drops the last batch. It's commonly used in PyTorch. Um, there is one benefit. If you always use the same batch size, the uh, NVIDIA libraries can optimize for a fixed batch size and th this doesn't cost you overhead because if you have various uh, varying batch size all the time, the, the GPUs try to optimize again for the new um, size. So I would recommend if you can just also to set this to true. Then the tra trainer itself, uh, this is from PyTorch Lightning, uh, number of GPUs, uh, by default we assume you have a GPU um, and the number of epochs you want to train the model for. Now, in our example, we use the lightly train command now. I have um, the data set here, right? So I can just specify an input directory. Let's take the uh, cat images here in train. 
I will for this example just um, train it for one epoch and I will use a batch size uh, batch size of 256. Now what happens is Lightly creates a model by default with the ResNet 18. By default, we use the SimCLR um, training procedure. So here you see even this uh, ResNet SimCLR, and we just train the model. It's by default, as you saw before, a pre-trained model. And um, just going through one epoch of the data set. Now you see here there was a warning. Hey, uh, I didn't specify the number of workers, so it was so I could uh, take a benefit in terms of speed by doing that. Let's have a look at what happens. Um, if I set this, and as you see here, it took it took us eighteen seconds to go through the data set. Now let's do it again. This time, number of workers specified to eight because I'm an, on an eight core machine, and hopefully it's a bit faster or not much. Let's see what happens. You see here also the iterations per second. It's like 50% faster. So it takes 12 seconds. Yes, so what happened now, I have a date, uh, model checkpoint. It's stored here at this uh, location. Um, let's have a look at what else is stored in there. Because we use the, the CLI, um, this is uh, by the way the same location as just here in Lightly Outputs. Then I have the uh, timestamp and the date. It's helpful for experiment tracking. Now in this folder, what you what you get is first of all the the Hydra config. So we have different files in there. Um, let me quickly show you one of them. So we have the, the default, the full config. This is by this essentially the default config. We also have um, overrides. So those are the ones I, uh, I specifically set now passing for the training command. So I set the max epochs to one, I set the input directory, and I also set the batch size and the number of workers. Now let's move out here and have a look at the other output. I have lightning logs. Um, this is what you get by default from, from PyTorch Lightning. In there we have the, so this guy here is for TensorFlow logs. So you could use Tensor, TensorBoard essentially to, to look at the graphs from training. Um, we have the checkpoints in here as well. This is now the, the checkpoint file. Uh, we're not going to open this one. Um, and then we also have the train CLI log, which is just basically the output of the CLI itself. Um, we also make, let me show this again, we also make a copy of the, the checkpoint just here to make it easily available. The one stored in here is uh, the one stored by PyTorch Lightning by default. Now we train the model, we can just create an embedding. Um, let's have a look at this. So I can again specify the input directory. Uh, let's take cat uh, folder again. I can use a checkpoint. Um, just point it to the one we had before. Where was it? Lightning outputs. Somewhere here, right? Yes. Right. Exactly. So let's just see what happens now. Um, the specified folder does not exist. Of course, I need to go into the train folder first. Um, this one should work. There might be a message again about... I um, don't oh know, it works well. Perfect. So what happened now is we took the pre-trained model and uh, we took the data set. We didn't do any augmentations now to the, to the data set. So we just resized the images and do, did the normalization. No cropping, no color change or, or something like that. So basically, it's like running the model in inference. And we we took the model 
uh, run all the data through it. And what essentially happens is we get the, the output for each of the, the samples. And we store this in a CSV file. We call this embedding CSV. Now this file looks quite large. Um, this is all just the very first line. Um, I can show this, I think, a bit more in a nicer way. So this is just the first line. We have the file names. Then basically we have an enumeration of all the embedding. Uh, the, the, this is the full vector. We have uh, 32 dimensions. We also have the, the label. Now the label in this case is just um, a zero for all the for all the samples because we don't really have label information now. Um, the label information can be useful if you have subfolders. We would attach um, a label to each folder, so there, there would be. So if you if you have a folder like cats and dogs, uh, one of them would be zero and one would be one. Uh, we can use this information then to to do plots of the different classes. But lightly has been designed from beginning that uh, you can work with it if you have zero labels uh, at hand. Now, what you see here is basically this is now the first entry. You have the the file name. So this was the the file uh, of the cat image. It's a PNG file, and then we have all the the values from the embedding vector, and finally the the label. Uh, we could now use this information to do a plot. We could also run a PCA or or some other dimensionality reduction method and create a two D plot of this. Um, so this was a very very simple overview. Um, the cool thing is you can also combine this, uh, the training and the, the the embedding essentially by using Lightly Magic. So what we can do now is we can say, hey, I want this input directory um, with the cat images. I want to use a trainer. Let's do it again for one epoch and. Um, the batch size, and of course the non-workers to speed things up. And Lightly Magic is just doing training embedding immediately after each other. Um, first trains the model, then just creates embedding. Of course, always uh, logs to you where the checkpoint has been stored or where the final embeddings um, can be found as well. So you see here, we already did the first step. We have the checkpoint, and here we have the, the embeddings. I hope this gave you a basic overview of how we can use the command line interface.